All right. You're listening to the Brown Perspective. This is Eduardo, and I'm here with El Mero Mero R.O. What's up? Now, much wanted to get your take on the state of Latino representation on in the entertainment industry. How much time you got, buddy? <laughs> <laughs> About 20 minutes tonight. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, up until this week, I didn't really think there was such a big problem with it. Actually, I felt that the representation was was increasing, uh, that it was improving. And I'm not necessarily sure that I agree with the sentiment that 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 somehow it's going to diminish as a result of these shows that were canceled. But, you know, let's talk about them and let's see where we arrive at this. We'll start with we we'll start with actually not with shows that were canceled because we are going to talk about Gordita Chronicles and and Bad Girl, but let's talk with let's talk about the new movie that's coming out about Fidel Castro and the choice to cast James Franco to portray Fidel and John Leguizamo's comments regarding that, voicing his displeasure that they're casting a non-Latino in Franco to play Fidel. Yes, and I think my paisano Leguizamo uh, makes some good points in terms of of the history of how many Hispanics, Latinos have gotten written out of the stories. And I know part of it is, in my mind, I think James Franco is seen as a more known actor. So part of it may be that, okay, and, and in some ways this whole controversy around it is, is, is bringing a lot of publicity to the film, but maybe for them, and, and I guess this kind of gets at the problem, right? Because this kind of proves the, the point that John Leguizamo is doing. So the reason why James, James Franco is considered a better actor or has more visibility is because he's been given that platform Versus a John Leguizamo, who's 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 uh, been in the business for a long time. I think he's had some some really good films. He has he's had some flops and some okay films. But the point is that that to 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 still be at a point where we don't think there that a Latino leading person can carry a film is and a film about a very controversial, whether you like him or not, uh, Fidel Castro is someone who has had or who had an impact on our history and our politics. I think not to cast a Latino in that in that role is, I think, is rightfully so, is rightfully um, infuriating, I guess is a word. It almost sounds like you're saying that Leguizamo wanted that role for himself, but that's not what you're saying, is it? No, and because I don't know, we don't I know think that Leguizamo could have done it, and I, but there could have been another art artist, right? So if it's not Leguizamo, um, I'm trying to think of at the top of my head what what other actors may so, kind of look like, yeah, like Fidel. But even then, if the, I, maybe I'm thinking of, of um, what's his name, Isaac. The Guatemalteco. Oh, so Oscar Isaac would have been a great, um, great choice for that. Also, I think Pedro Pascal would have actually been a lot better if they would have. I think he's Chilean. Well, I think it could be a better uh, Che Guevara, probably. But uh, he he could do a great Fidel. Also, I don't think I would enjoy Leguizamo as Fidel. I just I don't think he has. He's he's a good actor, but I just don't think he can carry uh, the type of of, of intensity. That, that I would expect to see in a movie uh, like uh, Benicio del Toro, but I think he's he's too old already. I think they, I'm not sure um, what what time in Fidel's life they're they're going for here, but he has played he played Che, right? He he didn't play Fidel. He did. Uh you know, I'm gonna be honest. I don't really have it a, a, as big of a problem as as I think you do. Just because I do think that James Franco <laughs> looks a lot like Fidel, so I, I think he's probably going to do a great job. Um, I think if, if if you if you flip things around, um, 
I think at some point there was some some chatter about Idris Elba being the next Bond. Whether or not that happens, I, I'm, I'm not sure, but it'd be great. And I'm sure a lot of people would be thrilled. I'm sure there's a lot of people that would be upset as well that you're casting a black person as... as well, as, well that's, the, that's the irony on that because the Bond series, and I think we discussed this before, was actually inspired by a Dominican operative mm -hmm. that a diplomat who I think he was on the lighter skin side, but clearly yeah. not a British white person. So I think that's the the issue. So if we had grown up with a Dominican or light skin looking Latino bond figure, I think the world and, and Hollywood would be very different, right? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't be so weird to see a, a a black bond or a Latino other characters, right? So, but you this are, is, yeah. But, so it kind of gets at the root of the problem. Part of it is like sort of the history, our roles, our things get whitewash, and then, and then, and then part of it is like, oh, we're it's like, oh, where are we going to find a talented Latino actor that looks like like Fidel Castro who carried the role? Maybe it's not like we Samo, I agree with you. He might not be the, the actor, but you're telling me that out of all of the actors out there, both in the U.S. and internationally, in Cuba even, like, can we, and I know that's controversial because who knows if there's someone, a Cuban or Cuban-American who would be willing to to play Fidel Castro, but you're telling me that there's no other actor who would be able to to play that role. Oh, I'm sure there's dozens or hundreds of them. The question is, is Hollywood going to cast someone that doesn't have as high a profile? Uh, it's possible that and they... And how you, how you get a higher profile. Right, right. So it's just, you have to give them the opportunities first, and then, right, they get the bigger profiles, but... I think maybe if you were in the Gordita Chronicles or you yeah. were in Vida or Hentified but or you, on The Black and those shows didn't get canceled, maybe right. you eventually develop a high profile, no? Right, but you know, think back to when, when the when the Bond series started with was it Sean Connery back in Sean the Connery. Sean Connery. Uh, I'll take it was Alex Trebek from uh, <laughs> SNL. It's so, so funny. T take the back in the seventies when that series started. Uh, there was absolutely no representation at the time, and so for them to try to cast a a an actor of mixed heritage or even uh, a Latino to play Bond, I mean, they it, would, it didn't even cross their minds. So I, I do think that the general trend is that we are getting seeing a lot more representation. I mean, and, and by the way, I mean, I'm including here African-American representation as well as Latinos, because I, I do think that that we each help each other bring down those barriers. You have the Black Panther with um, uh, the, the actor that recently, recently passed away, Chadwick Boseman. And then I don't know if you saw Tenet. It's, it's a trippy movie by Christopher mm -hmm, Nolan. That's Denzel Washington's son. Which mm -hmm. is now getting the the lead role in in a huge blockbuster film. It was, it was a crazy movie. It was like kind of like Inception, but it was really hard to follow. I don't know if if it was as successful as they thought it would be. But you know, the general trend is that we are seeing representation in the highest, in the most visible roles, in the in the lead roles. And yeah, this is a a, a temporary setback. I am disappointed. I, I don't know if they reached out to someone like Oscar Isaac or. Or uh, Pedro Pascal. My guess is that these guys are super busy because they're in high demand. So even if they did, they probably wouldn't have been able to get them. They could have gone for another actor, but um, you know they chose James Franco. Isn't James Franco partly like like mixed? Also, isn't he like part Portuguese? I, I, for, I forget exactly what it is. But... Yeah, they live is Portuguese. Yeah, but even Oscar Isaac and I know that Wissam no more makes this this argument like not a lot of people know that he's Guatemalan right because I think he had to drop the the Hernandez out of his name 
or the Latino sounding name. And he kind of looks like he could, you know, he could be Italian. I know he's played um, someone of Jewish descent, um, a bunch of things, right? Just uh, he has that yeah. type of look that he can. Well, that's why it's great. Cast, yeah, and that's why it's great uh, to cast him because he he's so versatile. And by the way, didn't John Leguizamo play an Italian character in Summer of Sam? <laughs> he did, yeah. 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 But, you know, I get the point. But I guess my sentiment is that the still the trajectory is still going in the right direction. And if anything, uh, uh, if people are upset about this, I always say that it's on us as well. We have enough. We have enough economic. Um, we have enough of an economic base. We have enough of an established middle class now amongst Latinos that we can start supporting each other. That we can start encouraging more of us to be directors. That we can start setting up uh, theater classes and after school programs to push more kids towards drama. I mean, at this point, it's within our control to to be able to have a huge impact on this, so that we're not concerned that some. A uh, studio run uh, that's run by uh, only white older guys or directors are are uh, making decisions. We're in a position where um, if we just start doing the work now, in the next twenty to twenty five years, we could see a huge huge difference. And again, because of our actions, instead of complaining when when those that the white people in charge don't cast us the way that we like. I mean, yeah, sure, we probably could have complained back in the 70s or, or the 80s when that was happening. But, you know, there's enough of us here that are successful. There's enough of us that that have enough, uh, uh, like I said, enough of a, of a base here, established base, that we can start really making strides here. So, it, it you know, I, I, I always push it back on, on the individual. And, you know, let's let's try to bring about the change that we want to see. And I'm sure John sure. Linguasam was doing that, too. I'm not saying that he's not. Yeah, and I think that's it, right? So part of it is, and and I uh, agree with you 100%, and the complaining or highlighting the fact that, you know, when it comes to to movie going, subscriptions, uh, to streaming um, shows and things like that, Latinos as other, as, as well as other people of color are people who are, paying for those services. So I, I agree with you. Like we certainly have we have the capacity to continue to build our own bench strength, but at the same time we need to also demand, right? So I think this is where this comes. So you pulled up the Gordita Chronicles. So you have a series that I watched that is that is great. It's funny. It has all the kind of typical elements of an American sitcom. Could it have been a little better? Perhaps. But the point is that it's being canceled to just one season. And mm -hmm. right, and, and we watched it precisely because A, we liked it. We wanted to support the um the artist. And there's so many other friends that I know who watched it. But now it gets canceled. So like this story doesn't have an opportunity to evolve. It does it only got one one season. What happens if the second season it gets better? The third season like it happens so many other shows. So that's the other problem. Like we are not given the op the opportunity, the platforms to grow our businesses, our shows to get to the point where we need to to get where we'll, ha we'll have that talent, where we'll be able to continue to have a lot of Latino and other art actors because they're great actors and they have the experience and the name recognition they need to to carry a film about our community they are planning to shop it somewhere else to, so to find their new home so hopefully they do and you get the second season there but again i'm not i don't want to come across as just trying to defend the status quo or trying to make excuses for the for, for the studios but we also have to 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 be realistic that they cancel shows all the time and i'm not sure if this is just what they're saying to avoid a backlash uh, or if this is true that they are pulling back on live action kids and family programming i mean i think we'd have to see what other shows they canceled uh to see if that's true or not but it could just be that they just decided that they wanted to go in a different direction 
which it is, but it is unfortunate. But I don't know if it's because it's a show about Latinos and they didn't think that it was important enough to continue this show. Obviously, you know, this is capitalism. So this is driven by demand. If if, if people are watching their, the shows, they don't care. <laughs> Well, they so this was acclaimed. This was what, and I don't know what the numbers are, but if if and if an indication of, of the type of how many people watch this, and if that doesn't, if that demand, if you produce a funny show with a high demand that was well liked and well received, and then you cancel it, so then, and and then the other problem is is that, you know, there's. It's just a pattern of the decisions that that get made, and then sometimes they they show some great programming from Latin America. Nothing wrong with that. I mm-hmm. think I love it. I watch, and I think it helps us stay connected to our roots, learn more about other places, get like different amazing storytelling. And I know those producers in Latin America even have more challenges to get something on any platform. Mm-hmm. But there's also the to your earlier comment, there's there's over 60 million Hispanics in the U.S. A lot of them are the main consumers, the main um, moviegoers, and they're still, I feel, are not given the respect that that they deserve as a consumer base. Yeah, so th- that is interesting that you pointed out that it uh, it launched on the platform to strong reviews. Uh, they did do a programming shift. Again, I think I'd have to, before I really do... Um, criticize them one way or the other because I'm also not defending them. I'm just trying to uh, understand more about this. I would be interested in reading more about what this actually means. Like pe- peel back the onion and and say, okay, once a studio like HBO Max pulls pulls back on on live action kids and family programming, like, well, what does that mean then? Does that mean that they're releasing the staff that that they're releasing uh, a branch of uh, of their division? that helps put together these types of shows. And so as a result of doing that, they had to let go of shows, even though those shows were getting positive reviews and were actually doing um, uh, doing well with viewers uh, because they felt that overall the decision to scrap live action kids and family programming uh, and whatever they're pivoting to, that's going to make them more money in the future. So I don't know if we can analyze this just... Um, I don't know if we can just look at, at at this show being canceled in isolation. I'd be more, I'd be interested to see what the bigger picture is and and what they because obviously at the end of the day it's about the it, it's about the the bottom number. If this show was making them like billions of dollars, of course they wouldn't cancel it. I mean, well, they, but it's the first season. They haven't allowed it to the second right, season. Right, right. So like you know, like Seinfeld, uh, right. Big Bang Theory. So you're saying this seventy shows. Like, you're, you're saying this it is, takes time. You're saying there's something something happening here similar to to black quarterbacks that they get they get one shot and maybe the coaches lose faith in them and and instead of keeping them around on the bench as a second or third stringer they just try to put them in a different position or or they just uh, forget about them and trade them meaning that uh, with this show they probably felt like, yeah, it had a good first season, but we don't really believe that it's going to have a, a strong second or third season, again, because of that underlying prejudice in Latino programming. So it wasn't yeah. wasn't really given a yeah, fair so shot. instead of investing it, and I know one of the decisions, supposedly the because HBO Max, I believe, was uh, bought out by a new a new entity. I think the, the I believe is Discovery, the ones that owe Discovery mm-hmm. Channel, and a number of other things. So I know the new CEO, his whole thing is focused on the quality of the programming. And that's fine. Yes, I'm all for having better quality. And I know you and I have talked about, and I'm trying to remember what the show was. It might have been Hentified uh, or another one that you said that. Oh, it was, a, it Sel- was an okay show. It was show. Selena. I think oh, it was Selena, a Selena show. That's right. Selena. Is there going to be another season for that one? I don't know. Damn. But... If, if that's the case, well, yes. So make better quality. Invest in the show. Invest in the story. Right? Like, don't just say, "Oh, we're gonna move, change directions." So, so sad, too bad. Like, okay, you're gonna invest in a direction. Then, then make sure that the the programming that you're investing is reflective of the of your consumer base. And I know they also made the they made the decision to pull the plug on Batgirl, which was featuring Leslie Grace. 
Dominican American um, per, uh, actress, and and apparently it was having re bad reviews. It might have been a bad movie. Who knows? But is, of, is the remake is the remake gonna get? And apparently it wasn't because of her of her acting. So is she gonna have the opportunity to to play in the new bad? girl if it was if there's they're gonna release a new movie or you know i mean mm -hmm. ben affleck got a chance to be batman yeah and so many other actresses and actors got a chance to to give their shot so we'll see what happens with that yeah and to be fair a lot of the movies that have come out of the of dc or the dc universe haven't been great they, they haven't been able to con compete with marvel Oh, as I as I show the marble, it's funny because like they're hearing because I see that right next to. There's that advertisement for the marble movie. Yeah, yeah. So again, I'm not too familiar with the details of why this this movie was canceled. I I did hear about it and I heard a lot of people complaining about it. Um, I think where, where was it? Further down here, it's saying that they did. They did a like a, an initial fan reaction, and they didn't get the response that they wanted. Um, so here it says a more likely reason for the film's sudden cancellation is that it was going to be set in an altered version of the mainstream D C E U timeline. So what they're saying it doesn't mix with the timeline, but that's strange because you 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 knew that when the script was written, right? Why why put together the movie and 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 go and waste all that money just to to then cancel it because it doesn't fit with the existing plot. Mm, right, here, here's the line that I was talking about. The bad girl allegedly did not satisfy test viewers, though others reports suggest it performed no worse in testing screens than upcoming Black Adam. Yeah, you know, it, it's hard to say. And these these uh, studios, they're cutthroat. That at the end of the day, they're looking for the bottom line. And... And and that and that's part of it. That you you take race out of it, you take any other any anything else out of it, and it just comes down to the bottom line. It's just about money. But uh, whether or not they think that a movie with a lead character as a Latino or with the Gordita Chronicles, a a a, a series specifically about la Latinos, whether whether they have faith that those uh, shows or movies are going to be able to generate enough profits for them, then, then that is different because then you, it, it, that, that there becomes very subjective because it could just be that the good old uh, universal appeal, like the Chappelle said, oh, these shows don't have universal appeal. So even if, even if we have good, good ratings here in the U.S., we're not going to be able to export them to China because the Chinese only want to see Americans, right? Something like that, like something stupid like that that somebody might think. But it, it's hard to say. It, it is unfortunate that, that these two shows were canceled. But honestly, like, like I said, I wouldn't worry about it. I, I do think that the trajectory is going in the right direction. I do think that we have great directors now, Latino or black directors. And I think we're going to get more in the future. And I think I do think that our community is going to be able to uh, have even better representation, say, in 10 years. Just like, again, because of the of of the pattern that i see i mean there's been some great movies uh that, what, what's the uh, what's the last one i don't know if you saw um what, what's the character that plays snoop dogg in the nwa movie what's his name the skinny skinny black guy he's great by the way i think his name is lakeith uh, forget his last name though so th there's a movie that uh, yeah lakeith stanfield this guy right here and i recognize him yeah so oh sorry to bother you so so this movie i don't know if you saw it, it it's a really, it's it's a really good movie and, and i believe the, the um yeah boots riley the the um the black director and, and this is a great movie and you know when i see movies like this that's that it, it gives me hope that okay you know this is great um i want to see more of this so this is what i think that again the the course is we're going in the right direction. So I know it's upsetting that they canceled these two shows, but I I wouldn't I don't think I would make a judgment on the entire industry based on that. Unless I started unless we started seeing this happen more and more. Okay, I think I'll I'll be willing to leave it at that positive positive note. All right. If you're allowed to enjoy our content, make sure to check us out. We are Brown Perspective. Nos vemos.